um, Saturday haul on for you guys today and I finally placed a Sephora order. I went the entire month of July without placing an order on the Sephora website, which I can't recall the last time I went an entire month without purchasing from Sephora in general. <laughs> so I got a couple uh, complexion products that are pretty new. I got the new Laura Mercier Translucent Loose Setting Powder. It's the Ultra Blur. There's 20 grams of product or 0.7 ounces and then I got the shade translucent. Uh, this powder here is made in France. So this is what the box packaging comes like. I want to say there are two or three possible shades of this. Um, I like the translucent loose setting powder from Laura Mercier. I've used and gone through quite a few of those over the years. Um, in comparison to this new one, that one sat a little bit heavier on the skin than this one. And both powders in the translucent shade on my skin do pull a little bit more yellow. And when you look at the powder in the container, you can see that yellow hue to it. And I do like this new powder better than the original because it sits so much lighter on the skin. Um, I thought originally, um, it's a talc-free powder, and I thought that because of the silica in it, that it was going to be one of those more drying powders, but silica isn't the first ingredient. It's the one, two, three, four, the fifth ingredient, and then in addition to that, um, it's got sunflower seed oil in here, um, so a little bit so of some hydrating type ingredients, and it doesn't feel drying on my skin. Granted, it is still summertime so we'll see kind of the difference when we get into the winter but I can say that when I use the original that one felt drier on my skin than this one does so two things it feels less drying than the original and it sits lighter on the skin like it's less detectable it's just a thinner powder and I do feel like it does a nice job of blurring the skin I feel like my skin looks really nice with this powder so this is the new jar packaging it's a frosted plastic with a cream colored lid there's no like closer on the sifter which would have been a really nice touch my favorite sifters are the ones that have the uh, swiveling open and close mechanism on the top those ones are just so easy to are convenient to use so that's the powder on my finger right there. And again, 0.7 ounces in here. So you're getting a pretty decent amount of product. We'll see just how far um, that'll take me if I use it every day as a setting powder. But that is, again, a pretty decent amount of product that you're getting in there. So really nice product from Laura Mercier there. Again, it feels really nice on the skin. I did not use it to set underneath my eyes because I got a new concealer that I wanted to try with my favorite under eye setting powder and I didn't kind of want to use the two new products at the same time to kind of see how they each work with the, my standard kind of products, if that makes sense. So I got the new Too Faced Born This Way Ethereal Light illuminating smoothing concealer so there's 0.16 fluid ounces of product in here and this one is made in Italy the shade that I got is oatmeal which I believe is the second to the lightest cool tone version I did not go with the lightest this time <laughs> so this shade actually matches me perfect it looks really really lovely underneath the eyes in terms of the color and then it says on here it's infused with coconut water Alpine Rose and Hyaluronic Acid. So 24 hour wear, waterproof, sweat and humidity resistant, non-creasing, delivers immediate and, immediate and all day moisture. So this is the concealer that I have underneath my eyes today and I gotta say I really like it so far. Um, I did spray my face with the uh, Peach and Lily kind of face spray. And usually when I do that, I'll get a little bit of migration into my little under eye kind of rolls there. And I just kind of take a Q-tip and gently wipe that off. Um, but that's something that kind of happens when I use a uh, setting spray, either the Glow Recipe or the Peach and Lily anyway. So I don't necessarily think it was a concealer issue. Um, but I've had this on uh, for, a while, I wanna say about five hours now, and I haven't had any creasing. Granted, I have not been outside and kind of did my normal outside things just yet, but it feels really comfortable underneath the eyes. I kind of get more leery now of products that have hyaluronic acid in them, because if the air is drier, then your skin, it can actually pull moisture out of your skin and kind of do the reverse effect. Um, I definitely have not used this long enough to see if that's a factor. It's been really humid here. 
So if I use it in the winter time, that's kind of when I'm gonna be able to tell whether or not this concealer does something like that. But so far, so good on this guy. It's a real serum-y consistency. One thing I had to do was go back in the tube quite a few times to get the product out. It's like, this one's the complete opposite of um, like what's that larger one the born this way concealer where a whole bunch of product comes out It's got a smaller kind of doe foot applicator and Concealer just kind of ends up being on the tip there. I don't know how there you can kind of see it So I had to go back in a couple times to get enough concealer for underneath both my eyes And I'd say it has a medium coverage um, They do call this illuminating but there are no visible sparkles or micas or like um, visible shine to it. I think it's called illuminating because it feels quite hydrating. Again, more like a like a serum-y type of concealer. I really, I really like it so far. Um, I like it a lot better than the Born This Way concealer or actually most Too Faced concealers that I've tried. I like this one the best that I've ever used from the brand before. Um, and it just feels really good underneath the eyes. So again, this is the shade Oatmeal right there. I also picked up the new Givenchy Prism Libre Highlighter, and this is a limited edition product. It's the shade 11. Um, I don't see a name on the packaging, so we're just gonna call it shade 11. So they're calling this one a highlighter, and I've actually got this on my cheeks as a blush. And I'm a huge fan of the Prism Libre uh, setting powders from Givenchy. I've got several of them and have gone through several of them over the years. It's just a really beautiful setting powder. So I did get the gold one that came out during the holidays. Um, and that's just a little bit too deep for me for like an everyday wear. So I like to like mix it with different things. Um, and again, this one is not a highlighter on my skin tone either. I suppose I could use it as a highlighter and blush in one, but I like to really lift those cheeks with a, a lighter highlighter on top. <laughs> so anyway, this has got 0.21 ounces of product in it. And this one here is also made in Italy. So here's the box packaging. So this is a little bit smaller container than the powder. So here's the powder that I had been using um, from Givenchy so you can see the size of the containers. But these have got four different quadrants in them and they have like a slightly different variation shade of the powder. Um, when it comes out, that's the shade that you get. There's no sifter in here either, but it does uh, come with a little Givenchy puff, which I do pull those out. So let me give you a swatch of it. At first I was like, oh, maybe this is not gonna be like blushy enough for a blush for me. And then I put it on and it is, it's just this really pretty baby doll pink blush on my skin. And I really like it for a blush. My hands got a bit of color to it. So it actually is showing up a little bit more uh, highlighty on there. Let me get some more and <laughs> let me swatch it on my watch skin. It's got a tan line <laughs> so you can see kind of the color a little bit better. But it's a really pretty powder, very, very finely milled. One other thing to mention is this does have a fragrance to it. Um, It's not really strong though. Even when I put it on, I didn't smell. I can only kind of smell it when I like kind of stick my nose up to the container and really get a whiff of it. So it's it's very faint, but it is in there. So that is the new Givenchy Prism Libre Highlighter in the shade 11. And then I also picked up another one of the Bio Radiant Gel Powder Highlighters from House Labs by Lady Gaga. This would be my second highlighter from the brand. And I kind of go like this because the first shade that I bought um, is a blush shade for me. And I kind of bought it knowing that it was going to be a blush. And I'll swatch that in comparison to this one just so you can see the two because they're kind of from the same uh, product line. Um, so this has got 0.3 ounces of product or eight and a half grams. And it's baked gelée, so of course it's made in Italy. So it's got this um, cardboard kind of recycled style packaging. And I love the new packaging too. So it's got a very opalescent look to it. It's a hard plastic with a magnetic closure. And then here is your highlighter. So this is the shade Sunstone. And I do have this on the top of my cheeks and the points of my face that I like to highlight. Um, on the top of my cheeks, I use the Anastasia Beverly Hills Pink Diamond just to really get this to adhere, but I didn't use it on the other parts that I highlight on my face. This is a really, really beautiful product. You guys know how much I love uh, baked gelée products in general. And this one here, 
Um, sometimes they can be quite stiff and they feel dry in the pen and you need a really stiff brush to pick them up. These powders are softer than some that I've tried in the past. Like I don't really have to push too hard to get the product to pick up on my finger. It's just a softer big gelé product. So really like that. I'm probably going to pick up a couple other shades. I've been eyeing the silver shade in the range and then also the pink shade that I could use as a blush because I really like the formulation of it. So that is the Sunstone shade. I've got the Givenchy still up there. And just for kicks, I'll swatch Fire Opal as well because again, they're kind of from the same product range there. And this is a beautiful tangerine with a strong pink duochrome shift to it. So there's Sunstone and there's Fire Opal. Just really lovely powder products there from uh, House Labs. Also from House Labs, they launched these high power pigment paints. So a newer product in the newer range. <laughs> so I got the shade Matte Mint. And I think the other um, finish that they have is a shimmer metallic. So there's a matte and like a shimmer metallic. So I got the mint one. I originally had like four of these in my cart. And I was like, again, just try one to see, you know, kind of how you feel about it. And I purchased this with the intention of using it as a waterline liner because they're supposed to be very, very long wearing and waterproof. So I thought that'll be great for the waterline. And I've actually got this shade on my waterline today. Um, these are much more gel like and fluid they're not like super liquidy liquidy but they are a gel like um, product for sure I'll kind of put some out and show you the consistency in a minute but when I put these on my waterline I used an itty bitty Wayne Goss brush and what I had to do was pick up just a little bit and build it up in layers because it's very fluid and gel like um, but it's not like super runny but it's very fluid and gel like <laughs> so I had to, being on the waterline I had to build it up in layers to get the intensity without it kind of migrating into my eyes before it set um, that being said I have had this on my waterline for a good again like five probably going on five five and a half hours now and there is a little bit of wear on the outer portion right here but it's been lasting really well in the waterline and because of that fluidity I, I think I'm going to go ahead and purchase I think there's a there's got to be a matte black and a brown um, and then I also want to get the blue shade so uh, I think it might be really nice to do a winged liner with so I, I'm not going to do a winged liner with this one because it's a pretty light shade um, I want you guys to kind of see the kind of consistency of it right there and if you um, kind of blend it out it will sheer out if you build it at layer after layer after the first layer dries you can get more opacity out of it so if you can see this is a squeezy tube bottle and again this is the mint matte shade and it's just very very thin a very thin um consistency with a nice gel like fluidity to it which i think in my in my mind it makes me think it's gonna the formula is gonna work really nicely to do a wing so I'm going to purchase a darker shade to try out uh, for winged liner as well. And again, so far so good with this guy on the waterline. You just have to build it up in layers to get the opacity out of it so that it doesn't like run in your eyes if you go in too heavy at first. <laughs> so anyway, that is the new House Labs uh, High Power Pigment Paint in Mint Matte right there. And that's what I have on my waterline. And then I picked up two products from Too Faced's latest launch, which I'm not 100% sure what the name of the collection is, but it's chocolate based. Nothing we haven't seen before. <laughs> but they did come out with new shades of their uh, cream lipstick, which I do have this on my lips today. So I got the shade Buttercream. This is the packaging right here. This has got 0.11 ounces of product in it. And this guy here is also made in Italy. So I really like the packaging on these. So this is the, got a chocolate kind of casing to it. And again, this is the shade Buttercream and I've got it on my lips today with the Too Faced. Um, this is their Lady Bold Badass is the shade. 
This is one of my favorite lip liners. I've actually been through two full size ones of those. Again, if I ever get around to filming that empties video, <laughs> you will see those, which hopefully I can do that soon. But anyway, the pairing of buttercream and that, that lip liner from Too Faced is just a really nice combination. So this formulation is the same as the Lady Bold lipstick formulation. It's very, very opaque. What I find with the lighter shades, because it is very, very opaque and it also is a cream factor, but it doesn't slide all over the lips. But especially with like when I do all this talking, like with filming and stuff, I can get a little bit of that inner kind of rim situation going on. Because again, this is a lighter shade than my lips. And it's also a super opaque formulation. But I do like this formula, so that, that's why I picked up this shade in a nude color. So this is the shade Buttercream right here from the range. I think they came out with five or six of these. I'm tempted to get the pink shade too. I just, I was hoping I'd make it to town so I could see it in person to see if it was going to be a really light, like light pink, which is what I was hoping for. But this is the shade Buttercream from the range and I wanted to swatch it next to the shade Brave from their original Lady Bold launch, which is also a nude, just so you could see the difference between the two shades. Um, one is just a little bit more pink than the other. So the shade Brave is just a little bit more pink than the, what did I call that? The buttercream shade right there. And to be honest, if I'd have known that buttercream was going to be so close to the shade Brave, I probably would have just got the pink shade from the new launch, but there you have it. So there's buttercream and there is the shade Brave right there. That is the new one. And those are from the Too Faced. Um, this is, they're not called, this is called Coco Bold, but they're like the Lady Bold lipstick formulation. So, <laughs> and then I also picked up Too Faced's new Better Than Chocolate Cocoa Infused Eyeshadow Palette. I forgot to mention too, the Coco Bold lipstick does have a slight chocolatey uh, scent to it. It has no taste or anything like that, but it does have like a sweeter cocoa type of scent to it. So this is the box packaging for the palette. And this guy here has 18 eyeshadows that are 0 0.038 ounces per shade. So just about 0 0.04, which is, it's an okay amount of product, but that, cause there are 18 shades in the palette. And then this guy is bulk made in the USA, assembled in the Dominican Republic. So here is the actual packaging. It is their tin style packaging that we have seen um, the majority of their chocolate launches come in and I do have this palette on my eyes today everything for eyeshadow that's on my eyes is from this palette um, magnetic closure and then your 18 shades so I'm just gonna say it this is just so not nothing we haven't seen before um, there are some really nice matte shadows they're pigmented they blended out really well some of those shimmers um, especially this purple this gold shade um, the blue, they're quite stiff. And I keep thinking when I keep buying <laughs> these chocolate palettes that they would switch it up, get a different formulation in there because shadow has come such a long ways from a formulation like this that I feel like they, they can do better. So I, I've got this purple on my lid today and it is so so lackluster. It's very hard pressed. I had to really kind of stab my brush in there to pick up the product. Now, not all of them are like that. Some of these bronzy brown shades are just absolutely stunning and they have that pretty like foiled look to them, but why couldn't they all be like that? <laughs> so like the, the most pops of color in there are more like stiff type of shades. So, and then too, I, Too Faced needs to switch it up, man, <laughs> because we have seen this color story in their palettes repeated over and over and over again. So again, with my purchase of this, I was kind of hoping that some of those shimmer shades were a different formulation than they are. Some of them are, but some of them are their old formulation as well. And the mattes, again, I did get along with those pretty well. So hopefully you can kind of see in the swatches um, whether or not it's something you would like to pick up. And then also some of those matte shadows, considering there are 18 shades in here, I feel like they could have did a little bit more differentiation between those matte brown shades. Like there isn't a matte brow bone highlight in this entire 18 shade palette that works on me. So I did use that shimmer underneath the brow. And then there are um, a few, you know, brown shades that are pretty close to one another. This is a satin one, this one right here. And it's not super impressive. <laughs> It smells like cocoa too, but it's not super strong. It 
and then these next four. See, that's, that's a swatch of that purple. I mean, I had to really pack it on the brush and go directly over my, my shadow primer to get it to look purple on the eye, but I was, I was hoping for so much more out of that shade. <laughs> and then these next shades. I mean, you can even see in that blue shade too what it looks like right there, and then what it looks like right there. And then the last shade here, which is a pretty green color. So, we've seen this. <laughs> we've seen this before, but anyway, there you have it. That is the Too Faced Better Than Chocolate Cocoa Infused Eyeshadow Palette. And again, that is what I have on my eyes. I do really like how the uh, eye look turned out. I think that it's very pretty, but it's just a little lackluster. So I know not everybody likes just a pop and sparkly, you know, like purple. They might want a little bit more subdued purple. And if that's you, this is the palette for you. <laughs> if you don't have any other Too Faced palettes. <laughs> so anyway, there are the swatches again of that guy. And then I did get in a couple lovely PR packages this week. This first one's from M Cosmetics and I was just, I didn't know what was coming and I was so surprised by it because I was looking at like, there were two shades in particular that I wanted from the range, but they launched a new lip product and it's called the Everglass Lip Dew. Um, there are six shade availables. They're made in South Korea and there is 0.15 fluid ounces of product in there. And Michelle Fond is such, a beautiful job of like when she does her her promo pictures and stuff it's so so very ethereal it really draws you in <laughs> and her packaging is really really pretty really unique packaging this here it says product highlights a glass like shine in subtle lip perfecting shades lightweight gloss serum gel hybrid with luxurious comfort of a balm cruelty free vegan hypoallergenic dermatologist tested formulated without gluten ingredients, parabens, PFOs, and PFAs. So this is the card that came in the little um, bag there. And then this is what the box packaging looks like on there. So I didn't put one of these on today so that you could see what it looks like when I put it on over a lipstick. Um, these don't really have a scent. They feel, they feel very nourishing like like that gloss um oil hybrid but they don't slip all over the lips they feel very very nice on the lips so this is the shade lullaby and i'm going to put it on my lips and then i'll swatch it on my hand too so you can see it in line with the other shades um just so you can see kind of the shine it's very yeah very very comfortable non-sticky and again it does feel like one of those gloss lip oil hybrid type products. Look at that shine though. So I'll go ahead and put a swatch of this on my hand. Again, this is the shade Lullaby. And you can see they do have a decent amount of pigment in there. And then we've got the shade T, which has got more brown in it. So that is the shade T. And then this next shade is Dream, which is like a warm kind of baby pink color. That one is the shade Dream. And then we also got the shade Enchant right here, which is a peachy kind of nude. So that one right there, what I say is this, that's the uh, Enchant right there. And then you can see, I didn't even like showcase the packaging. The packaging is really cool. Let me show you the packaging real quick. <laughs> So each one, it's got a little window where you can see the actual product inside through the little window. And then it's got a gold top with the M logo on it. Again, very unique packaging. And then it's got kind of a one of those longer slanted skinny style doe foot applicators there. And then the next two shades, we have got the shade Secret. So that is the shade Secret right there. And then the last shade is called Temptress, which has got some rosy red to it. So that one is the shade Temptress right there. 
Just a huge thank you to M Cosmetics for sending these over. They're just really, really pretty uh, lip products. So again, those are the new Everglass Lip Dews. And again, their packaging, super cool. And then the indie brand Fantasy Cosmetica reached out um, to send me their latest palette that they're coming out with. And this is launching on August 12th. And I said, yes, absolutely, because they sent over their Druid palette. And it is that same formulation that I absolutely love, um, similar to uh, Sugar Drizzle and also Simply Posh. There's some shades in these palettes that are just absolutely stunning. And I'll show the two palettes next to each other. But um, let me show you guys what the packaging looks like. So this is their Sorcerer palette. And this guy here has got nine shades that are 0 .05. I think they mean 0 .05. It says 0 .5 on the back, but that's like a huge like face powder compact size. So I think they mean 0 .05 um, of product per shade. So because the pan size is like a standard 0 0.05 ounces of product. <laughs> so anyway, um, the palette is made in China. And then here is the sleeve. It mimics the actual packaging, which is a cardboard with a magnetic closure. Really pretty imagery on it. So this, again, is their Sorcerer palette. And these shades in here, these are those shimmer type of shades that I am just obsessed with. I can't get enough of how beautiful um, these shades look. And then the mattes in here too are so pigmented and they also blend out really nice. So some pretty bright shades in here, but wait till you see the swatches of those shimmer shades. Also the mattes, they're just really, really pigmented shades. I really like the formulation. Um, from those indie brands like again Simply Posh and Sugar Drizzle and now um, Fantasy Cosmetica. It's a really good formula. Wait for these next two. <laughs> They're just stunning. Oh, I got one more finger. <laughs> Can we just? <laughs> They're just so pretty. Whoa. Yeah, my eyes just draw to those like super shiny shades. And then this last shade here too, which is like a multi type of multi chrome, multi type of multi chrome. <laughs> to use this as a pairing palette um, because there's some pretty bright shades in there but also um, everything's kind of mid-tone and deeper with the exception of that shade right there which is kind of duochrome-y and just maybe a little bit too loud for something underneath the brow for me but beautiful on the lid. Just really stunning uh, shades in this guy. So that is the Fantasy Cosmetica uh, Sorcerer palette right there. And a huge thank you to Fantasy Cosmetica for sending this over. Again, this one comes out on the 12th of August. And if memory serves me correctly, their Druid palette sold out really quickly too. So hopefully that's either in stock or it comes back in stock. And I just realized I told you I was going to show you the two palettes next to each other. <laughs> so I've actually used the Druid palette quite a bit because it's just this grungy green forest looking color story. It's stunning. Right there. So that's the Druid and that's the, what did I say, Sorcerer palette right there. And then lastly, I got a package from the House of Siage and I did not know that the Sweet Atelier was going to be a collection, but they came out with another fragrance in their Sweet Atelier collection. So I believe it was last week that I hauled, um, it's their Sweet Dream perfume and I've been wearing this daily. It's been my daily wearer recently. So this one here is the Sweet Dream again with this packaging. Wait till you see the packaging on their latest fragrance and this one is called Cream Chiffon. So here is the promo card that comes inside and then I'll read off the notes to you guys because it might help you better distinguish than me trying to describe it, although I'll describe how I think it smells to you as well. <laughs> so the top notes are bitter orange, brown sugar, STT, grapefruit. The heart notes are Oli Banum, Benzwan, Heliotrope, and the base notes are whipped vanilla, white musk, vetiver, 
Haiti. I don't know how many words I butchered to that, but deliciously complex cream chiffon perfume portrays spicy yet fruity notes of olibanum intensified by the creamy whipped vanilla met with warm and sweet benzoin notes. That's the description. <laughs> so here's my description. Um, it's very, very sweet. The notes in this one are much sweeter for me than the Sweet Dream. So Sweet Dream opened very sweet, but the dry down wasn't quite as sweet. This one dries down, opens, and it's just really sweet all around and it definitely has that cream factor. So I really like uh, scents like this, but I can't have them be this strong um, and like really put them all over because it's just too intense of a, of a cream factor for me. Um, one spritz of this is all I need to get a whiff of the sweetness. Any more for me and it can make me feel just a little bit lightheaded. It's just something about a particularly creamy sweet that does that for me, even with like candles and stuff like that. Um, but that being said, the mixture, because Sweet Dream, um, the sweetness goes away a little bit quicker and this one lasts, I've been mixing the two and I almost feel like that mixture. And so I do one spray followed by one spray of the other and that's like, that's like it because these are really potent fragrances. The concentration of perfume oil is a lot more than other perfumes. And I always say too that um, the, the quality of the actual spray itself is just really good. So like I have other like designer perfumes and stuff and while I really like those fragrances, I mean, I can put on 10 sprays of it um, and still have it fade throughout the day. I don't feel like House of Siage ones do that. It's very hard to get them to fade, <laughs> if you will. But let me kind of show you the, the packaging in the bottle and stuff like that. So this is Cream Chiffon. This one's got ice cream cones. I don't know if you know this about me, you probably don't, but I'm an ice cream fiend. I love ice cream. I could eat it for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. That's like for real. <laughs> so anyway, this one's got ice cream cones on it. And then you open it up and you've got your cupcake. There's a little apple on top, Swarovski crystals, and then all the little ice creams around the way. So this one's got the yellow packaging. It fades from yellow into a clear glass right there. And it does come with your little uh, microfiber kind of cl uh, cleaning wipe down cloth. Um, this one's got the little rainbow Swarovskis around it as well. And here are the two bottles side by side. You've got Sweet Dream and Cream Chiffon. So with Cream Chiffon, definitely think uh, lasting creamy vanilla is, is how I would describe this. So if you like that creamy, creamy, cream vanilla, this guy right here, and it stays a sweet scent. Um, this one, I get whiffs of it throughout the day with the sweetness, and it goes on and it opens very sweet, but the, the dry down isn't near as sweet as the cream chiffon is so that's kind of my best description and I've been enjoying mixing the two again one spritz of each is all like I did that a couple hours ago and I can still smell it so I'm wearing both of these perfumes right now it's one of their cutest collections that they've done um I don't know if you've ever purchased the house of siage fragrance but they're the bottles are like super heavy duty they feel they're they are expensive they do feel expensive and they smell expensive as well so a huge thank you to the house of siage for sending me over their cream chiffon and this is also available on the house of siage website right now too and they're they've been having some really good sales lately as well um they're dying Diamond powder lipsticks are some of my favorite in my collection. I absolutely love that formulation. It's really easy to wear and just really pretty lipsticks. And they also have a slight hint of vanilla, which I love. And that is everything that I have for my haul today. I hope you guys enjoyed it and found it helpful. Thank you for watching. Do not forget to wear sunscreen and I will see you guys later. Bye.